everyone, I'm going to show you how to create an Amazon Lambda function in Python to use with an Alexa skill set. Now I'm not going to use the word Alexa again because she's always listening and she's going to turn on and start talking to me. So I'm going to call this now the Amazon skill set. So let me start off by saying I am not an expert at building Lambda, Lambda functions nor building Amazon voice applications. Not yet but I did want to share my workflow steps because um, it wasn't obvious how to get started. So if you have a better way to accomplish something, please feel free to you know, leave a comment. Also, all the code I show you will be on my GitHub and I'll include a link to that in the description below. And lastly, Amazon has a ton of really great examples on, on their website um, for building Lambda functions. So I really recommend uh, looking at some of those examples too and that's really where I learned uh, everything that I know so far is uh, looking at the examples and working through them and trying to understand them. So let me show you what I put together. Um, so I have a, a a simple Python project where I'm going to put together um, a, a Lambda function that will be used as part of the Amazon skill set and it's a little more than, uh, than the trivial ones because I also have third-party libraries that I want to include in it. So you have to create a zip file in the, in the right format so that you can upload it as a Lambda function. So there's a little bit to it, you know, but I'll, show you, I'll take you through the steps. All right, so I created something called the base handler. Uh, and this has some abstract methods that the concrete implementations will have to implement. And I learned about these concrete implementations through the examples on the Amazon website. So there's on launch, um, on session started, on intent, and on session ended. So concrete implementations will have to uh, implement those. Um, there's a process request helper method, which just looks at the event and determines which of those handler methods should be called. And again, this is right from the color um, example provided by Amazon. And the speechlet response properly formats a JSON um, data structure so that it has the output speech, the card, and the reprompt, and should session end. These are things that the Amazon Echo is going to be looking for. So this just formats the JSON uh, payload in the right way, and the build response helper method just returns the overall response message to the Amazon Echo so it knows how to interpret the text data so you can have a uh, voiced application. So that's the base class for it. The concrete implementation um, that I have is, is not all that complicated or, or interesting really, all of the um, handler methods do the exact same thing. They all call the test response method with just a slightly different um, uh, parameter just so I know which of these handlers was actually called. But basically what it's going to do is output the speech output which is just welcome to the test deployment for the request type that was passed in. Um, it seems to have worked. The card titles and outputs are the things that actually go to the Amazon application. Uh, the um, mobile application and reprompt as if it didn't hear you or you didn't give it the right um, inputs um, it can then reprompt so that's just a reprompt text that you have to include and for us once we're done with it the session we just say the session ends so then we uh, we build the speech response then build the response and we, we return this and that's what gets returned to the Amazon Echo so that's a really quick um, this is how you these are the entry points that you and the handlers that you have to implement for a, a skill set and a voice application all right, so now for the Lambda function, there has to be this entry point uh, that you configure as part of the uh, Lambda function upload, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So I put that in a main.py file, and I called it Lambda Handler. You could have called this anything. Uh, it seems like all the examples call it Lambda Handler, so I just went with that convention. And you get past two parameters, um, an event and a context, and in this all I'm doing is instantiating a concrete implementation of the, uh, the deployment handler, and then delegating to the process request method the two parameters that were passed um, to the Lambda handler, the event in the context. And then I just return that response. Um, so that's really all there is to a very simple um, skill set uh, Lambda function. So I do have a requirements file uh, that I have three libraries, requests, SSE client, and hammock. And while this particular project doesn't use them, the next one I want to work on does. So I wanted to make sure I could get these third-party libraries installed into the zip file that has to be uploaded as part of the Lambda function. So that's why these are here right now. And the thing that actually creates the deployment is the script I wrote called create deployment. And the thing that you need to know about this one is if you use this, um, there's a variable called deployment files, which is just a collection of uh, Python files that you want as part of the deployment. Not every file in this root level needs to nor should it 
be part of the Lambda function. So for example, the test pi doesn't need to be part of it. The actual create deployment script doesn't need to be part of it. So these are the only files that are going to be part of the deployment um, distribution along with anything in your requirements.txt. And you can read this stuff, but really all it's doing is it's creating a properly formatted zip file with, with that um, information in it. So let's go ahead and create one of those. We'll go ahead and run the create deployment script. And it's going to, I mean, assuming also that um, on your system, wherever you run this, you're able to, in a shell, do a pip install. So that's really what all this is doing is shelling out and doing a pip install of a bunch of things. So here we went from the deployment one. So it looks in the deployments directory and just looks at the deployment directories and figures out what the next largest number should be. So it created deployment2 and a deployment2.zip. If we look inside the directory, we'll see the files that I asked to be placed there along with the things that were in the uh, requirements file. All right, so now this deployment2.zip, that's what we want to be our Lambda function. So let's go over to the Amazon Web Services now. And if we look at the um, Amazon Web Services, there's a Lambda function. Once you log in, you can get over to the Lambdas. Let me just start at this point. I want to make sure to tell you, you need to be on the uh, US East, uh, North Virginia. It's because the um, skill sets only, for whatever reason, um, the skill sets only uh, deployed to that particular area. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new Lambda function. Now you're going to be asked if you want to start with a blueprint. And since we have a zip file ready to be loaded, I don't need the blueprint, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. I can name it anything, so I'm going to call it my test deployment. The description is my uh, Python deployment. And it's not Node.js, we're using Python 2.7. Now, if you wanted to just type in your Python code right here, you could do that, but we actually have a zip file, so we're going to go ahead and upload the zip. And it's the deployments to zip, so that's the one we just created. And it's going to go ahead and upload that. Now, we need to change this handler entry point because I didn't name my script Lambda function. I named it main. So in the main script, call the Lambda handler function. For the role, you always select basic execution role. And why it flips me over to this page just for me to hit allow, I'm not sure, but that's what you got to do. All right, uh, we've uploaded our file. So just one, so that's we named it. Description, it's Python, that's the right handler point. That's the right role. So we're ready to go ahead and create that function. So what that's doing now is it's uploading the zip file. Uh, Amazon's exploding it and creating a, uh, an application with those dependencies for me. So you can go ahead and go over to the configuration, see everything's still good there. But what you really want to do is head over to event sources. And what we're going to do is add an event source. And in this case, we're adding a skill kit. And when you do that, what you're saying here is I want to tie this Lambda function to an Amazon skills set um, application. It even gives you a link over to the, uh, the, uh, the developer portal. Now, before we head over there, though, you need to make uh, a note of that um, that resource uh, link there. That's what actually ties the Lambda function and the actual skill set we're going to create. So if you head over to the Alexa the, um, developer portal, and we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to add a new skill. All right, the skill here can be named uh, anything. If This is what the application would be named if we were going to um, deploy this but we're really not going to put it in the marketplace. So let's call this uh, my Python deployment. The invocation name, now I do recommend you read the invocation name guidelines because this is what you, um, this is the one word to three word phrase that you um, use when you're talking to the Amazon Echo. So you're going to do something like ask deployment, what was the status? So we're going to call this deployment. Version 1.0. Uh, and this is where the ARN comes in. And now this is where the, the things get tied together. That's how the Lambda function and this um, skill, that's how we get, that's how you associate them. All right, so now every um, voice application has uh, an intent schema and sample utterances. And I'm not going to go into the details of, of these. There's some really great documentation on it. Um, but let me just go ahead and take some predefined ones that I've already figured out. 
Then they go get the sample utterances. All right. So um, intents, I think of those as uh, something like events. So you, we're defining a de deployment intent. And slots are variables. Think of those as variables in the utterance. Um, in this case, I don't have any variables in the utterance. It's always going to be what is the deployment status. If you look at the color example, that's a really good example because you'd be asking for what is a color, and color might be um, a slot or a variable that you pass to it. And you always get the help intent. So whenever I use a phrase like what is the deployment status, what is the status, provide the deployment status, all of those get associated to the deployment intent. And the deployment intent is defined up here. In this case, we're defining it with um, no particular variables. And it's this deployment intent, along with this um, skill, that they get tied together. So once you've done that part of it, you're, you're now able to test it. So here it, it actually says it's been enabled for this account. We can test it out by using this phrase here. But before we actually say it, um, I always like to test it in the web page first. All right, so if this works, this will be the request that's going to be sent in. You can see the details there. And this is the response from our Lambda function that we just uploaded from the zip file. And you can see here's the, uh, you know, welcome to the Python test deployment for request type. In this case, it was on launch. It seems to have worked. So now at this point, uh, we can actually ask the Amazon Echo the same thing. And let's see if we can get a response from that. Alexa, ask deployment. Welcome to the Python Alexa test deployment for request type on launch. It seems to have worked. So there you go. That's how you, um, using you know Python, uh, we created a Lambda function that we can hook up into an Amazon skill set and create a zip file in the format that's required, even with some third-party libraries. Uploaded that to the um, Amazon Web Service Lambda area. So we have that, tied it to a skill set, and then configured a quick skill set to actually run on the Amazon Echo. So I know that was a lot of information, um, but I hope that was helpful. If you have any uh, comments, go ahead and leave them below. Thanks.